Perak Ashutfin Daftes Zion, sponsor the Rufu Shalema for Tino Ben Esther Sara. Today's daf primarily focuses on the personality Eov. It presents an ongoing conversation between Hashem and the Sutton. I will, with Siyat Dishmaya, attempt to outline it. Number one, Hashem complements Eov's spiritual qualities, especially being easygoing with money. Later, the Gemara adds he improved fields of orphans and praised widows or declared them as relatives to help them remarry. Number two, the Sutton responds, he is righteous because he was exceedingly blessed. His charity put a poor person immediately back on his feet. He never worried about his flock. His goats were more ferocious than wolves. Seeds he planted sprouted immediately. However, if his mazel changed, he would not remain righteous. Number three, soon after, Eov received reports one after another about the death of his children and destruction of his property. Number four, Eov prostrated himself, declaring, I entered this world with nothing, and so I will die. May Hashem's name be blessed. He did not blame Hashem. Number five, Hashem condemns the Sutton for turning him against Eov for no reason. Number six, the Sutton continues his diatribe against Eov. A man sacrifices all his possessions, even his children, to spare his own life. He assumed Hashem destroyed all to spare him. Number seven, based on this claim, Hashem permits the Sutton to afflict him to the point of death. The Gemara deduces, just as the Sutton is the Yetzirah, he is also the Malach HaMavis. However, the Gemara ascribes his actions against Eov as L'Shem Shemayim. He was concerned that Hashem would overlook Avraham's greatness being focused on Eov. This explains the Sutton's constant reminders to Hashem of Avraham. Number eight, Rav infers from the verse, B'chol zois loy chata Eov b'svasav. In spite of this, he did not sin in words, but sinned in his heart. The Gemara proves this from various verses in Eov. The first verse states, Eretz Nasna Biad Russia. Hashem handed the land to the evil. Rav understood this as blasphemous. Hashem is not in control. Abaya understood Eov as castigating the Sutton. The second verse states, Al Daitcha Kilo Irsha. Were it your intention, I would not be evil. He declares determinism. His friends criticize him for diminishing mankind's fear of punishment and need to pray. Although Hashem created the Yetzirah, the Torah is its remedy. The third verse expresses an overly bold attitude. After his suffering, he demands his sins and merits weight on a scale to determine Hashem's justice. Similarly, he declares, Lo yesh beinenu mochiach yoshis yodoi al shneinu. There is no arbiter between us that can lay his hands on us. He declared his virtue not laying eyes even on a virgin, whereas Avram never gazed even at Sarah, his wife. He declared Hashem reversed by mistake the lettering of his name, Eov, for Oyev, enemy, punishing him for no reason. Hashem proves from various natural phenomena, he discerns even slight differences. Number one, blindness results from two hairs emerging from one follicle. Number two, rain must fall as individual drops for products to grow. Number three, sound from thunder travels different paths so the noise is not deafening. Number four, a mountain goat births on a cliff. An eagle catches its newborn in time to save it from falling to its death. Number five, a snake bites a gazelle's narrow birth canal to allow the fetus to exit without killing the mother. Number s- the verse concluding this discussion states, Eov loy bedas yidaber. His distress caused him to say things he did not mean. The Gemara now explains his friends knew of his suffering, even living so far apart. Number one, each wore crowns with their names and faces. A face would change when their circumstances changed. Number two, all owned trees named for each of their friends that would dry up if one's circumstances changed. Eov, after his suffering, was blessed with double the amount of sons and possessions, but not daughters. 
Rabbi Yochanan explained the verse in Bereshis, Vayiki heichel l'orov al-pnei adama, uvanos yudu lohem, meaning propagation, or in our case, increase, happens by way of girls. Rabbi Yochanan explained his three daughters increased in beauty. If you're enjoying Daphne 5, please click on the link below, subscribe, and become a sponsor.